everyone, this is Joe Luzzi from What I'm Playing Now, and I'm here with Gil Hova from Formal Ferret Games. Um, this is our first interview here. We are at Origins 2018. Um, I just set up my booth. I'm exhausted. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Are you done with your booth? That was gonna be one of the first questions I was I'm gonna ask like you. Like 98% done. Actually, that's not true. Uh, when we're done, my booth mates are currently setting up this really cool prop in the booth that okay. uh, is gonna look amazing. So. Uh, uh, I'm, I don't want to give too many details, although people watching this probably weren't at the show. Uh, it's a bunch of TVs, a bunch of little TVs that are going to be set up uh, hanging off a pole. So, Oh, that's it, awesome. Yeah. And it's, okay, that's totally new from your booth last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, it's totally new. And yeah. they're going to be playing little clips, like animated clips of the art from the game. Okay. So uh, it's And it's going to look really, really amazing. So Oh, that sounds that sounds incredible. I, I can't wait to see this now. So once that's in, <laughs> we're, we, we're calling... We uh, we have to figure out what to call it. We've been calling it the monster for now, but we're not entirely sure uh, what the name should be. Is it a bear to set up? Uh, well, the good news is I'm not setting it up. So that's the... You're, you're just overseeing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm just overseeing and I'm doing interviews while uh, my booth mates set up. My booth mates are great. See, that's, my booth mates are that's, absolutely wonderful. That's where you want to be. You want to be at that position where yep. you're not setting it up. You're yep. just able to do this type of stuff. And a shout out to uh, Double Exposure Envoy, uh, which is the company. Uh, they they help me with marketing. And okay. they are the ones who actually designed and built the, the, the monster. Uh, so they do all sorts of great stuff like that. And they're also – actually, it's probably going to be them building it. And my booth mates are going to be assisting. So. Oh, Cool. You know, uh, most of the work was done by Envoy, so I okay. just want to give them a shout out. Actually, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm quite familiar with them. Yes. I, yeah. um, there's a lot of people down at the local game store that I go to that um, bring their games in Excellent. and then show yes. that stuff. So, yes, quite Excellent. quite familiar with their stuff. So, all right, let's get all over to um, what you're showing here at the show. Yes. We have yeah. a couple of games sitting here. Which one do you want to start with? I'll let you choose. Okay, so let's start with the networks. Okay. Uh, so the networks, if you haven't gotten to try it yet, uh, came out two years ago. Uh, you were running your own TV network. You're mm -hmm. a network executive. You start the game with a little bit of cash and three terrible TV shows. And you're trying to get the most <laughs> viewers over five seasons. And I will say... This is not just because Gil's in here. It's one, a great game. And two, I told him it's a really great game because just you're going to laugh when you play this. I guarantee it. There is no way you cannot laugh when you're playing this game. Just from reading all the cards, everybody at the table, I can I guarantee is going to have a great time playing this. So you start out with shows like uh, this is Unlocking Your Cat's Psychic Potential. Uh, I don't know how we can see it. Uh, emergency broadcast test hour. That's sort of the, the the quality of shows you start with. But I think the important thing also is not just that. I mean, it is a funny game to play, and I I'm I I worked hard on that. But I also worked really hard on actually making it like a, a solid game underneath. And so, it is. Yeah. it is a very solid game. Yes. So even though it's like um, you know it, it it does have this silly veneer, mm -hmm. um, but it's not silly. Like even when you sit down and play it, the art sort of indicates that there's something underneath. You right. know. So. Everything about the game shows that this isn't just something that you just look through the cards, go ha ha, and put it away no, and never no, play. No, definitely, again. definitely a solid game underneath that um, that funny exterior, like yeah. you were saying. So let me um, let me show you guys how the game's actually played. So we're gonna take a look at a TV show. Uh, we're gonna look <coughs> at this show. This is my favorite example. I'm I'm used to this one, and I'm going to. <laughs> is it okay if I like put this like really close to the camera? Sure. Or will it be, be out sure. of focus. Hey, we could try it. Okay, let's we'll give, give it, it a shot. shot. Okay, here we go. So let's look at this card over here. So this card over here is the wacky TSA agent, uh, and as you can see, it's got some numbers uh, down the side uh, over here. Uh, so these numbers tell you what how many viewers you get uh, each season. The top numbers tell you. Um, how many viewers you get in the shows for a season. And that's important because viewers are victory points in this game. So this show, um, if you put it on in the correct time slot, which is 9 p.m., uh, you are going to get eight viewers at the end of the season. Okay? Uh, so pretty straightforward there. Uh, but you have uh, a cube on this card. It's going to start in this top row. And at the end of the season, after the show scores, it's going to age and you drop the cube. Uh, and the next season... Uh, when you score, it's only going to score you six viewers. And, uh, you know, most shows go the way of all flesh. Uh, they fall apart. They get terrible. <laughs> uh, and so on and so forth. Now, there's other cards. They're called stars. Uh, and they also um, give you viewers. And you sort of lap them underneath. Um, and they, uh, so they'll add to the number of viewers, but they'll also age. And a lot of times they'll also cost money. So shows cost money, stars cost money. You can put ads on your shows and ads will lap underneath there also and ads will give you some money back. But it's not about most money, it's about most viewers in the game. So, um, 
so you've got stars, you've got ads, you've got shows. And the way the game works is on your turn you do one thing. Uh, you can develop a show, which is uh, taking a show card from one of the available cards. It's like a drafting game. Um, or you can take a star from one of the available rows and uh, uh, pay for the star. Um, one of the now I'll I'll point you to uh, you can probably see it from here. There's this little purple icon on the bottom here. On the this shows that. Uh, the show requires a star. You must put a star in this show. Uh, and your stars are these purple cards. Um, I'm very prepared here. <laughs> um, let me show you a sample star. Top star off the deck. We'll top deck this. Here we go. Okay, so here's a sample star. As you can see, uh, she's got numbers down the side. Um, but she's got numbers down both sides, uh, which is interesting. Uh, this is a star that only wants to be on a drama. Like, she does best on a drama. So... Let's say you put her on a drama. Let's put her on Upton Krabby. Okay, so here's <laughs> Upton Krabby. Here's our star. We're going to put her underneath, and you can see how she adds to the value of a show. In the show's first season, she's going to get you three extra viewers. And you can tell that this is a drama. Here's the drama icon. There's the drama icon. Dramas are red. Dramas are red. She's good. But what if we made her the wacky TSA agent? The Wacky TSA agent is a sitcom. She's not as good, so you've got to rotate her, and she doesn't get you as many viewers. So that's how um, stars are going to work in the game. Um, and a lot of the game is managing your stars and trying to put them in the best position possible. So uh, you have to manage your stars, you have to manage your shows, and you have to manage your ads because you need income and mm -hmm. you need money in order to get more shows and stars. And at the end of the game, the player with the most viewers wins. Um, there's, you know, obviously some more things to it, but it's ultimately a drafting game. So since you can only draft one card at a time, uh, there's a lot of trickiness of, do I go for like this input for combination now that I know I right. can get? Or do I spend a few turns trying to go for the perfect combination that somebody might be able to spoil for me uh, by taking the cards that I needed? So um, while there's no, while there's little direct interaction, unless right. you, there's certain cards that increase the amount of direct interaction, if your playing group likes to play that way, um, if you want to, if you want to play that way, that's fine. Um, that there's cards that include it uh, that that allow for it. But if you don't want to play that way, that's fine. Also, you just play without them, and the game plays just as well. So it really is very flexible, depending on what game group you have. Like whether you want to play it like harshly or not, it yeah. works. My just group as is well. harsh. <laughs> my, my group is just straight up harsh. And some people are <laughs> like, I never want to play with those cards, and that's just, that's totally fine. Yeah, my so, group my group is very unforgiving when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> So that is the networks that this game came out two years ago, did really well on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. uh, and recently I kickstarted an expansion yep. uh, called Executives, which is in my hotel room because I, I'm very good at planning. <laughs> So um, I have my hotel room, uh, Executives. Executives adds variable player powers to the game, mm -hmm. and that's going to be out in September. Uh, I should be so, getting my yeah. Kickstarter hopefully then soon. In August, <laughs> yes. There we go. And I should have it for sale at Gen Con also. Okay. So uh, if you go into Gen Con, you can get it a little early. If you backed it or pre-ordered it, you can pick it up at Gen Con, or you can wait for me to deliver it. You know, either works. Right mm -hmm. now it's uh, on schedule. So, yeah, I'm very... Um, I'm very excited because the networks is turning out to be a very flexible system because I have another expansion that I released two weeks ago at UK Games Expo. All right. So Let's this, hear about this one. So this expansion is called Teletime. Okay. And Teletime, as you might infer from the box, is um, an expansion that is based on British television. So you actually replace all the shows from the base game with a new deck of shows. Um, and these are all based off of British shows. Now, one thing I want to address right away is there's nothing wrong with the deck in the base game. It's just that the best way to offer a, a game that is properly balanced for what it needs to be mm -hmm. uh, is to replace the, uh, the shows. Because if you just shuffle in the shows, you get like four dramas coming out in one right. season. And yeah. that's it not as... There. Yeah, got, yeah, it's just not as interesting. So it works best if, if you swap it out. Executives also comes with its own deck of shows. Mm -hmm. So. Plus, it almost sets the theme for the game. Then, yeah, yes. I mean, it's, it's, so you're almost changing the theme just by mm -hmm. changing the deck of, yep. deck, deck of shows. And another that makes sense. Yep. And another thing I can do is I can change 
the how, the way the game feels mechanically. Uh, Executives introduces a small tweak to the genres, mm -hmm. uh, very very small. In that, in the base game, there are some genres that are less uh, common than others, uh, because you start the game with a sports show and a reality show. Sports and reality is less common in the deck in the base game. Now in executives, they're equally distributed, uh, but that meant a little bit of tweaking and uh, playing differently. Um, so Telly Time has some mechanical differences. It's not just new shows that are funny, especially if you're British. Uh, it also adds a bunch of new genres. So okay. let me show you some of these shows. We got Narrow Temple over here. We've got uh, Offenders over here. These are two of my action shows. Uh, Paisley Looking Glass over here. Drake's Eight. Uh, somewhat marginal, the IV crowd, and uh, the bitey moose. Uh, my personal favorite is the ancient ones, um, the adequate British fry up, and so on. Um, now we're going to get to some of these different shows. So this over here is a show whose genre is not in the base game. This is Peril Vol okay. over here. Um, and Peril Vol is a kids show, so you don't get kids shows in the base game. Uh, the way a kids show is different is it actually it's a very subtle difference uh kids shows tend to want to run a lot of ads so you can make a lot of money off of them and they tend to give you a ton a lot more viewers than comparable shows uh the downside is you can only run them in not you, they only want to be run in the 8 p.m time slot okay. you can run them in 9 or 10 but you'll get fewer viewers in the first season. makes sense yeah yes um this over here is a chat show uh this is um too Late with Diamond Dutch, um, which uh, British uh, viewers may recognize what show I'm parading there. Uh, so this one over here is this icon over here, which shows, remember that rotating mechanism I showed with that drama star before? Mm -hmm. uh, this card lets you rotate all stars and ads on one time slot from their bad side to their good side. Oh, cool. Because okay. Because you're putting them on the chat show. Right, right. You know, and they're, and they're bring, bringing out their side of the story. And the third kind of show... Um, I'll show Crystal Days over here. This is a quiz show, and with a quiz show, you can put in one to three million dollars extra oh, to wow. get one to three viewers at the end of each season for each quiz show you have. Okay. So uh, there's th so those are some big differences. So um, you might be wondering now if you're familiar with the base game. Mm -hmm. One thing about the base game is there's a bonus when you get three shows of the same genre right. or five shows of the same genre. You know those are all uh, bonuses. Uh, however, that's going to be hard to do in Telly Time because in Telly Time, um, you know, you've got nine genres now, so it's a lot harder to get all those common shows. Mm -hmm. So instead, there's a different way of getting a genre bonus. So instead, you have these bingo cards, and uh, there's five different bingo cards, and they're all uh, double sided with different stuff on each side. And when you get a show of a certain genre, you cover it, and the game comes with these plastic okay. chips. Okay. So you cover it with a chip. Uh, when you get three in a row, that's a genre bonus. Oh, so cool, okay. it changes the way you get genre bonuses. And it'll change every game you play because the cards are different then. Yep, yep. I mean, nice. okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, that part won't feel that different because, right. you know, uh, but it will feel different in, it will feel different in that some shows, um, in, in some shows you are um, going, some games you're going to be going for certain genres, other right. games you're going to be going for other genres. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that way will feel a little bit different. Um, and the way the deck is prepared at the start of the game, uh, they're distributed equally enough that each, each, a show of each genre is guaranteed to come out once in season two to three, and at, le at least once in seasons two to three, and at least once in season four to five. Okay. So um, you're not going to be stuck without a show for um, like three or four seasons. All right. uh, now, somebody might beat you to the show. I'm, I'm not promising you that. Yeah. Yeah, it can but, always happen. Yeah, but <laughs> now if you're playing the executives expansions, there's all sorts of weird exceptions in executives. That's one of the things that makes it so compelling. And some executives can like change the genre of a show. Okay. Uh, there's all these weird things. Yeah, they things. have the power, yeah. basically. Yeah, so there's all these weird and interesting powers. So Teletime is fully compatible with executives. Okay. Um, and there's all these cool things you can you can add to it. So that is networks, and that is networks telly time. Okay. And keep an eye out, and are, maybe we can uh, meet during Gen Con, and I can show you uh, executives. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm going to be at Gen Con, but if I am there, excellent. De excellent. Whoa, definitely going to do that. Okay. All right. So I think we're going to jump over to Wordsy. Yes, let us jump over to Wordsy. I'm just going to put this stuff all away right. from 
for networks. So Wordsy is um, is a totally different game uh, for a totally different audience, whereas Networks is more of a strategy game. Mm -hmm. Wordsy is more of a mass market or family game. This is a word game, a uh, straight up word game. So uh, we're going to set up. I don't know how well we can see the table from here. But... I think we kind of have the camera on us and not on the table. Okay, that's okay. So, <laughs> so I'm we'll just going to hold up a couple of cards. I'm going to show you what the cards look like. So we've got <laughs> these little cards, and they all have a letter on them, okay? Um, and there's only going to be consonants. They're never going to be vowels. You're going to put eight of them out sort of on a two-by-four grid. Okay. So you've got two rows of four letters each, all right. okay? And each of the columns... Is, uh, of two letters each is going to be worth a certain amount of points. Five points for the first column, four points for the second column, and so on and so forth. Okay. So as the column, so so as you deal out the letters, they're going to be worth a certain amount of points. Right. So you've got these various letters, all consonants, eight of them out on the board, and now you're going to try to come up with a word. Now what makes this game different is you don't need all your letters in your word to be represented. Like you can add all the letters you want. Okay. Okay. So uh, whereas other word games you need all the letters in, in uh, you need like a card for every letter. Right. Or right. there are some games that are starting to loosen that like hardback. You can flip over a card and now it's a wild card. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's possible too. But in this game you can just add them, you know. So okay. this game actually rewards longer words, which is the whole idea behind it. Cool. Um, so it feels very different. It's been really well received so far um, on its third printing right now. So uh, the way the game works is you're going to deal out the cards and then everybody's going to look at the board at the same time and you're all going to go on your score sheet. I have these special score sheets that I sell at conventions. Uh, the game normally comes with smaller paper score sheets. Uh, this oh, is a, nice. This is a larger laminated score yeah. sheet that I sell at conventions. Um, and so uh, you write down your word. The first player to write down your word, because this part of the game is real time, mm -hmm. first player to write down their word will grab the timer and flip it. So there's a real time element to the game, but it's not a Twitch game. So some players are like, oh, I'm going to try to rush other players and come up with a word as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. Well, the timer is 30 seconds long, which is not really a short time. You right, know, right. you might panic for 10 seconds and then realize, <laughs> oh, I still have 20 seconds to come up with a word. So it's plenty of time to come up with something. The idea of the timer is to move the game along. It's yeah. not to reward the player who has the best reflexes. Uh, it's not one of those kinds of games. Nothing wrong with those kinds of games. That's just not the one I wanted to make. So, um, so after 30 seconds, after everybody's written their words, you score your words. Now, this is where the timer comes in. Uh, it is important if you flip the timer, though. Mm -hmm. If you're the fastest player, if you're the player who flipped the timer, you want your word to be equal to or better than everybody else's word. All right. Okay? Whether I'm playing two-player or four-player, you know. Um, it's a little bit different in five or six. Um, now, I flip the timer. You want your word to be better than my word. Okay, so if we're just gotcha. playing two player, right. uh, and I flip the timer, I sort of get the tiebreaker, but you want your word to be better than mine. Okay. Uh, and there's bonuses on the line. There's a bigger bonus for a player flip the player flip the timer. So there's always an incentive to be the player flip the timer. But if you don't flip the timer, you can still get a bonus if you beat the player who did flip the timer. Uh, that's all the rules. I just gave you, I'd say, 95% of the rules. There's a couple of small edge case rules, but, I mean, now you should have an idea of how to play. If you're on Twitter, you can go to at Wordsybot, uh, and that is a Twitter bot that tweets out a board every 30 minutes, uh, and then you can reply oh, to it. Awesome. Yeah, it's really yeah, cool. That's cool. And you can reply to it with what you think is the best uh, word. It'll score your word, and then after 30 minutes, it'll say who had the best word. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. It's, when I play this, I'm definitely going to have to try that. Yeah, so that's... That sounds, <laughs> that sounds awesome. So that is at Wordsybot. Okay. Um, incidentally, uh, apparently if you um, if you don't see a new game from Rob Davio this year, it's apparently my fault. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> see, uh, he would just like everybody to know. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, it is... Uh, but, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a nice way to sort of get the hang of Wordsy. But as you can see, it's very easy to play, very right. quick to pick up. Um, and uh, I'm really super proud of it. Cool. All right. Both great games. I played Networks. I have not played Wordsy. I can definitely say Networks is an awesome game. Wordsy sounds incredible. I definitely want to give that one a shot. But the one thing I always have to ask the people I'm interviewing, what have you been playing lately? Because the name of the podcast is what I'm playing now. So what has been hitting your table at home? So I wish I could give a long list of games. It, but it could one, be a nice short one. You could just one. One thing about being a publisher is you don't get to play a lot of yeah. games. But... Um, I, I did get my copy of The Mind, 
a okay. few a, a couple of months I've ago. Been wanting, I've been I've been hearing so much buzz about that one. So totally fascinating game. I want to do a ludology about it because I'm one of the co-hosts of ludology. Yes. Um, so here's good podcast. I listened to that you, one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so that here, one to your podcast players if you don't listen to it. Here's an interesting <laughs> thing. So the mind is. I think it's a great game. I think it's it's incredibly brilliant. Uh, the only weird thing about it is you kind of have to not follow the rules because um, the rules say you are okay. n- you're <laughs> not allowed to communicate with other players. You're not allowed to consult with okay. other players is the exact wording in English and apparently in German that's very close. Um, and a lot of people who have heard a lot about the game, they buy the game, they open up the rules, they read it and they play it and they're like, OK, you're not allowed to consult. And they play it as if everybody was a black box. The game is oh, really, okay. really dull if you do that. Yeah. And some people are even like, this isn't even a game. No, you have to allow body language in it. Okay. You know, very slight body language. Uh, but there's like a real um, – there's a real magic circle thing going on okay. in the game. So you really have to buy in to this idea of, okay, we're going to stretch the rules a little bit. But I know people are really frustrated with the game. You know, like why did it get nominated for a SpielDR yeah, yeah. if the only way that you can play the game is to ignore it, 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 not not play it according to the letter of the rules, which is. But it also could be a translation thing. It could just be, you know, maybe the rules aren't set in stone. Maybe they're supposed to be bent a little. I mean, bit. rules it, it, that opens that's interesting. It's just it's, the it's, science it's, space, right? Right. Because we've never we've right. never really had a game that has been so well acclaimed. Once you tweak one of the rules, right? So that's what really fascinates me about it. Because mm-hmm. yeah, if you play it with no consultation, it's a terrible game, you know. Interesting. But okay. if you play it with body language, but not too much body language, yeah. you know, you know, no shaking head, no nodding, no nothing that's like totally visible. Though honestly, if your group wants to do it, screw it, let your group play that way. So I, I so agree, hundred percent. Play yeah. the games so they're fun. Exactly. That's what the yeah. games are supposed to be fun. That's yep. why we're here. Yeah, some fun. Hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, what else have I been playing lately? Um, I got a copy of Movable Type. Okay. Uh, speaking of word games, and I, I've been really enjoying that one. Okay. Uh, though I've only been able to play it solo. I haven't been able to play it with multiple players. But always good to have your game have a solo mode. You know, yes, that way, yes. if you don't have an opponent, you can always play it. Uh, my girlfriend has been on a real Splendor kick, which is great because she doesn't normally play games. Um, and Splendor is a phenomenal game, yep. right? A lot of people give it hate. They they're looking for the next Splendor killer, but no, Splendor is Splendor, great. Splendor is a good game for what it is, and the expansion does add some nice things to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, so yeah, we have the base game and the expansion at home. Yeah, we like it. Yeah, she's a huge fan yep. of the game, and I can't blame her. I I, it, it I is, really it is, enjoy it's, the game. It's a good game. It's fun. It's really if you're well, looking for a lighter, quick game. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's really well done. It's yeah. really well yes. made. And I I I've had I had somebody come up to me and say, well, you know, the problem with the game is if you ignore the lower row cards and just focus on the higher cards, you'll win every time. And I don't know who that person was playing, but I have not <laughs> found that to be the case. Yeah, I you don't know, know about that either. Yeah, I try doing that, and I get beaten by players who are going for the lower yes, value cards because yes. they can attack the nobles faster. I would agree with you on that. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's a strategy that always loses, but, but it, it's just a, 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 another way to possibly play yeah. the game. It depends on which route you want to take, which shows me that the game first, you know, in terms of being a strategy game, is well balanced. Yes. Um, I, yeah, I think it's a solid finale. Phenomenal design. It's a game that I won't say no to. I enjoy it. It's a good, good game. Yep. Uh, what else? I got to try the new Century Spice Road, uh, Eastern so Wonders. We haven't tried that one yet. So that's I, really that's, good. We're gonna, that's, hopefully we're going to get to try that one at the show here. So here's the interesting thing about this one. It's for a different audience. You know, I've seen that from some of the videos. Yes, I'm yes. like, okay, this is they took this in a whole different kind yeah. of like, yeah, this is a 90 degree turn here. You'll hear a lot of people <laughs> saying, oh, I like this so much better. Uh, and what they're really saying is this more for me, you know, because right. the original Century Spice Road was made for it fills up the same space that Splendor does. Yeah. You know, it's a relatively light game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's got some decision making, but not a huge amount. Right. For the, a lot of it, you go with the flow, especially once you learn com- the combinations of what, what everything is. You know, there's a real flow to the game. And I find that flow really pleasant, really yeah. enjoyable. Um, but, you know, obviously not for everybody. No game is for everybody. Um, and if you're like a hardcore gamer and you really want every game, every game you play to be full of decisions, no, Century Spice Road isn't going to be for you. Uh, but um, Century Eastern Wonders uh, certainly is a lot chunkier mm-hmm. because it includes a map. Right. Um, and I think it, it's going to be more successful at pulling in the gamer market. And I'd like to try – there's an option where you can play with both games at the same time. That's what I want to try. I That's really what I'm very interested that. in trying. Yeah. So I know you have another interview you need yes. to get to. Yes. So we're going to fist bump like we always do, sir. Bam. Yes. And thank you. You are my thank first you, interview Joe. of the show. Hey, Joe, from What I'm Playing Now, we're going to be back later on with some more interviews. Catch us on the website, whatimplayingnow.com. Listen to the podcast. 
and check out uh, Gil's podcast as well, Ludology. And Breaking Into Board Games. Yes. Ludology and my two podcasts. So there you go. Thank you, everybody. We'll catch you later.